This is a curb log. This is a curb log. And I am joined by Ben Diskin on this curb log now. And then you know you know the rest. Da 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 da. <laughs> I'm not a singer. <laughs> yeah. I'm clipping the audio. Perfect. But, but we're gonna fix it and post. Uh, welcome. This is, uh, I believe, the second week of Voice October. Uh, but we're recording this back in September. But oh you, my gosh. Oh, and we're time traveling again, as we oft do in in curb logs. Doing the time war uh, again. Oh, that should have been the song. But I was being too self indulgent by <laughs> talking about. That that show that you did, yeah, yes, like almost well, over ten years ago, yeah, yeah. Wow. For how for how many years? Uh, a total of like four of actual recording. Good God. Yeah. Um. So I'm joined by Ben Diskin. Hi. Yes, he's been on many a curb log by now, so you're all familiar with him. Um. But I decided to do. Uh, well, tell tell them who you are anyway, just because. Oh, uh, let's not do this, shall we? Come on. I'm a martial artist, N- uh. and I'm really nice. Ha <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, um, I'm a voice actor. I live out here in Los Angeles. I've been doing this for a little over 25 years now, and I am a friend of Curb Offers. Yes. Um, and, we, yeah. and we talked a lot about Dragon Ball Z yes. dur- during during the week leading up to the Resurrection F premiere, so that was that was a thing for a while. We still got to record that cover for Resurrection F. Oh, song. yeah. Well, actually, I met a guy. Oh. I, met, I met a guy who I might have him, like, actually do it. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Okay. Isn't? But I, I have to find out if he's going to do it or not. Cool. But either way, uh, yeah, so I wanted to bring Ben on uh, as one of... Uh, so I, I have two Curb Logs this, this month, of course, that are talking about games I worked on that are coming out this month. But for the other two, for each week, I wanted to be joined by a couple of, uh, of colleagues, friends, associates, lovely people that I, that I respect. I thought you were going to say lovers for a second. There. Yes. Well, really I mean, well, okay. Well, mo- most people, if they, if they follow us on Twitter, they already know That's that. That's true. Too, Come here. But, you know, <laughs> gross. Delicious. Uh, his girlfriend, uh, Heather, is also tolerating all of this she's, nonsense. She's sitting crap. behind us. <laughs> she, has, she has the greatest expression on her face right now. Do you want to say I'm hi? right here, guys. Yeah. Did you wait until I leave? No, no, you should have you should have waited for me in general because I saw him first and I <laughs> and I and I did. Um, <laughs> Heather's a Heather's a patient, amazing person. Yes, and I love you. <laughs> Very much. It's archived on my on my channel forever. So there. Yeah. Now you have to stay together forever. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I wanted to bring Ben on in particular uh, because he is uh, he and the other guest I'm going to have on who I will not spoil yet. It's. Ah, it's, 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 it. Bill, it's Billy Zane. I, we're, 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 all, we're all pals. <gasps> Yay! Yeah, you grow ask up to, him why he doesn't play Zane or Yeah, Zane ask him or, why I don't grow up to be him. Yeah. And I, I grow up to be Richard Epcar in, like, in like three shows. that happened? <laughs> um, no, uh, but, but uh, ben, ben is amongst the, um, the longest working veterans uh, in the industry of the voiceover actoring uh, that I know. Uh, because you've been doing it since... Well, you technically have been doing acting since you were like an infant, right? Yeah, if uh, you want to call it that. I mean... Com- yeah. Commercials with sure. the, by your... Because your mom and your dad were both actors? Yeah, they're both actors, and they uh, they put me in the industry when I was technically still in the womb. So I've been like... I've had representations oh, since right. before I was born. That's right, so, that's so, right. So technically, yeah. But I mean, like actual... Like for voiceover stuff, I'd say since I was like six. That's usually where I kind of... Okay. Out. And what was your first show again? First cartoon show? Yeah. Uh, that was uh, Problem Child, the animated series. Oh, and, that, and was that when... Uh... The funny thing happened with yes, with that, was, that was that was the first and I believe last time I ever got to work with Ginny McSwain, which someday I will rectify that, Ginny. <laughs> I will rectify that. Oh, dude, yeah, she. Well, by the time that this this little uh, <laughs> this is going on my channel, I'll have uh, be I'll be taking a workshop with her, Ooh. Uh, and we'll totally be best buds, and I'll have uh, been in all the shows that she ever works on. She'll have retroactively put me in Gravity Falls, which Great. is probably finished recording by this point. Yes. So Ginny's a pal, and she's totally listening to this right now. I'm oh, of course, a, such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but she yeah no no care. funny story about a kind, about a kindergarten cop no that was the first movie you did that was the n- no n- yes was no it? yeah I'm gonna say yes Pro- problem problem oh. child though is what I meant to say oh yes. yeah yeah so that 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 you worked on that yeah and you were a young chitlin yeah and you had to be angry yeah <laughs> and I, uh, oh that's right I had to be angry in uh, 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 one of these episodes it was something like you know like 
how dare you was the line. It was something like that. And Getting I was like, on by bullies or yeah. something. And I was yeah. like, how dare you? And, she, and Jenny's like, no, 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 Ben, you have to say it angrily. Oh, okay. How dare you? And she's like, no, <laughs> no, Ben, angrily. These guys are mean to you. Get angry. I'm like, okay, how dare you? And she's like, no, you have to get angry. You have to get angry. And my mom is back there like trying not to like cry from laughter because <laughs> oh she's God. watching Ginny like freaking get pissed oh. off trying to get me to get pissed off. The good news is now I'm very good at getting angry. So, yes. Well, yeah. I mean with, with kids next door, I mean I, <laughs> I, was, I was within earshot. No, I was I was sitting next to you. We were when we were at. Uh, was it no? I don't know. Kind of crap. Oh, oh no. Uh, AX. No, no. Uh, Shit. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, kanji. kanji. I'm an idiot. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, guys. Anime Kanji. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jeremiah, and all you guys. Uh, I'm an asshole. Uh, no, and anime, anime Kanji. Oh, oh, at that ca- anime Kanji. I'll just like edit it. Later. Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> we uh, when we were doing the autograph session and people asked you to do number one. You screamed at the top of your lungs, kids next door at battle stations, yes. louder than I louder than I swear I, I think I'd ever heard you do in any actual episode of that show. <laughs> no, everything was that loud. That was that was the show that like everybody uh, uh, affectionately refers to as blood throat. Yeah. Because everybody would leave with just with like sore throats because every line was like bigger, 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 louder, louder, louder. Well, but, Je- yeah. Jess Harnell was even telling story. I think <laughs> I think he did. We still don't even know who he played, but he was apparently in an episode. Yeah. And was complaining about how literally, I mean, like, for good reason, more or less, about yeah. how, like, everything he had to shout. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this poor guy. Yep. But uh, but that said, mm. uh, I did, I, I, I loved that show. And yeah. I, I actually went back, and, and Liz and I, uh, who has been, actually, ooh, you, you might have broken her record for how many curb logs you might you might you might have technically been in more than her by this oh point oh my god uh, well she's going to she's going to be doing one with me in uh, in november Damn so it. we'll see we'll see okay but either way uh but she and I we marathoned like four seasons worth of that show i think long time wow uh and then later i on my own i watched the uh operation zero cool. movie yeah but um so we're just kind of i mean we okay so we did a we did a, a podcast interview Right around when I first met you, mm-hmm. you know what? Actually, a lot of people have been genuinely curious. I don't think we told this story because we we did an interview on on Wachow many years ago when, oh, yeah. when that was a thing. Um, but before that, I don't know because I don't think during that interview we told this story. People have actually asked how we met. It's, oh, it's kind of funny. Well, we we, we met at this cute little cafe, yes. and I yeah. saw him from across the room, and I was like, I just have to and talk he to was, him. He was smitten. Yeah. Uh, no, we met on Facebook. But I did not know he was Kerbifer. Yes. Because I don't know anybody's actual names. I just know their screen names. So. Well, well the, so, yeah. so prior to that, yeah. I had heard, uh, I, th- I believe it was Masako, went to a convention where you were at in England. Yes. And he met you and he saw that you had the My Voice Gives Me Super Strength shirt. Correct. And I was like, wait, oh my God, Ben Diskin, he must be a Yu-Gi-Oh! British fan. And I was like, oh my God, holy crap. And, and unbeknownst to me, I, so you had heard me in that, but I forget if you had seen any of the stuff that I had made, like on Newgrounds. Or no, no, no. Or... I, I was familiar with Kerbifer 15 from Newgrounds, right. but I was not aware that Chris Niosi was his actual name. Yes. So that's what that was. Sorry, I'm turning down my Skype noises. Uh-oh. I didn't have those on. Well, whoop, whoop. Um, right, but, but, uh, but when you saw... Was well, so then what? Did, what did you? What, what did tell me about me? What, what did you? No. What did you see of mine before that happened? Then um, I had seen not Brawl Taunts, but it was all the Nintendo collabs. Oh, oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I knew yeah. you from. Because um, you, you would constantly torture me with the woof. Yes, <laughs> ha, ha, woof. Great dog sound. Um, but uh, yeah, and so like I think you'd, you'd like mention to me something like you know, hey, just wanted to like like say I, I've I've used some of, I've stolen some of your voice techniques or something. Oh like that. yeah, no. Oh, so I I found. You did an interview on KH Insider. Okay. Uh, and then I found your Facebook page, and I heard your interview. I was like, oh, he seems like a cool guy. I like Ben. Oh, wait, no, no. Okay, I also remember. This is part of it, too, was uh, before Marathon and Kids Next Door, Liz and I also, because I, I started watching that again when I had met you later on, but Liz and I were... <laughs> Liz and I were marathoning uh, Hey Arnold, because they were playing it on uh, the 90s or all that. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I we saw the episode where they're stuck up on the uh, the roller coaster in the dinosaur theme park and they had to go rescue you guys with the cherry picker. I remember that, yeah. And and then I saw oh and then I also so so that was when I found out. Wait a minute, Ben Diskin was Eugene in that. Oh my god! And then I heard and then I realized I heard it because <laughs> like the, the lot the, and I thought about the lines. Like, no, no, that was the second time. The first time they used a cherry picker. I'm like, oh my god, I hear it. I hear like like hoagie or whatever. You know, like a little bit of like. 
You know, because Ben Ben has affectionately referred to my um, my encyclopedic knowledge of all things voiceover to like a scary degree as my uh, superpower. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, in in probably a Rain Man uh, never go full retard type sense. <laughs> Your so, words, not uh, no, that, and I, yeah, in my <laughs> words. I mean, you know, I've I've already I've already <laughs> talked about that ahead of time to, in, many, in many a Curb blog, so. It's Burger Syndrome, everybody. It's it's you know Corey Burton and I. So yeah. we share in common. Well, okay. But uh, but either way. So uh, yeah, that that happened. That was funny to me. So then I, I heard the interview, and then and then I, uh, I I went to you on your Facebook. I was like, hey, was you know I think I even said I was like rewatching Arnold or something maybe. But I was like, mm. oh yeah, like stole a lot of acting tricks from you, and you know keep up the great work, etc. Right. And because you didn't know who I was. Yeah, I was just like, all right, yeah, that's great, buddy. Uh, don't take any wooden nickels there, kiddo. You yeah. know, one of those yeah. things, like, I was like, I have no idea what this guy is. Like, okay, I don't want to bother. Yeah. And then at some other point, I feel like... Uh, Soul Saga. You it, found the Soul Saga Kickstarter. Yes, that's right. right. Um, don't know what's going on with that one, guys. Sorry. It's been a while. <laughs> um, but, uh, but Soul Saga was a Kickstarter that I did the casting and directing for with Devin Mack. We worked with uh, Kira Buckland and Todd Habercorn. Yeah. And, uh, and then Ben saw that, and he was like, hey, I'm actually going to donate to this. Uh, because I, I want to see this happen. Yeah, it looked and, like a badass game. Yeah, and it has been funded, and it has been worked on. I just have not been in communication with Mike Gale for a while, but, excuse me, um, I, I reached out to you when I saw that. I was like, hey, man, uh, so I'm actually casting for that. I'll, you want me to keep in the loop on when that happens? Because I'd be more than happy to work with you at some point. And you're like, oh, yeah, totally. Thanks, Kerbifer. And I was like, ha, 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 yeah. he, oh. he. <laughs> what 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 caused that was I saw your name and I was like Chris Neosi I've seen that somewhere before but I don't remember where and mm-hmm. it's because I didn't remember that you'd sent that to me like a year prior to that right and so then I looked it up and was like oh it's Kerbifer oh from Newgrounds oh I know that guy right. neat so but when you when you said that I originally assumed oh haha he must have like Google searched my screen name or something or maybe he like recognized me from like Yu Gi Oh Bridge or something haha and then you had mentioned like oh no I've seen your stuff dude I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Jesus. So, so then, then as an excuse, basically as an excuse to get to, to get to know you better, I, I invited you on with Chow and we did the episode. And then after that, uh, I uh, I just was like, hey, let's talk on Skype sometime. To which then you would talk to me in your uh, home recording booth that yeah. I have borrowed for recording certain tome episodes. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it yeah, still yeah, smells of you, my love. That one hasn't come out yet. Uh, no, actually, no, no. I think by the time this one is out, I think episode zero is behind the scenes stuff. Oh. So I, did, I recorded episode zero, 14, and 15 at your place. That's right. But you used to talk to me over Skype uh, there, and it would get quite sweaty in your booth. Yeah, my booth has no ventilation. It's like a giant coffin yeah, made so. of like, you know, foam. So sometimes it gets a little sweaty and you have to take off some clothing in there. Uh, ben originally wanted to record this curb log uh, in this booth. Oh, just, uh, just him and me together pressed up against yes. each other, sharing one mic. Yes, na- na- completely naked. Yeah. Oh well, 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 Heather, well, Heather <laughs> and, his, and his dog Rex just, just stare from outside. And <laughs> she has just plopped down. <laughs> She's slumped over at the, at the I still love you. Uh, you guys some privacy. Okay, she's leaving. It's okay, you can go try to beat my Mario Maker levels if yeah, you want. Do it. Do it. Embarrass myself enough. Oh. All right. Nobody has to see that because you don't have a, an account. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then I moved out here. Yeah. And you were there for AX the weekend that I moved, mm-hmm. and we hung out, and you and you so graciously invited me to that that concert thing. Oh yeah. Uh, that that like video game. It wasn't video games live. No, but it was like a similar thing. Like, yeah, uh, but it was it was super cool, and they yeah. had Kingdom Farts music. They did. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was awesome. <laughs> which uh, which speaking of that, uh, we we've been playing. Well, you guys have been playing them yeah. recently, so. Uh, because Heather is a big Kingdom Hearts fan. Yes. Uh, long time one. And as, as am I. Uh, and as are you. Yep. you, you, now, did, you did you play the first one when it first came out? Yes, I played one when it first came out. I also played two when two first came out. But it's been so long that they're practically new games. Okay. Right? And you and you did play Chain of Memories on GBA, right? Uh, I tried to play Chain of Memories on GBA, and I hated it. You never royally. beat it? I, okay. I, I think I got like... I don't know, like a two rooms in, and went okay, okay. I'm done. So you never even like probably met Axel. <laughs> oh no! I, when when two came out, I was like, I don't know what the Who fuck is going. Who are these people in the coats? Yeah, I was just like, okay, I guess something cool happened. Uh, all right, well, well neat. Uh, uh, but yeah, you guys have been playing the HD ports. Yes. Uh, and it was funny because you brought Heather. You brought your copy of Dream Drop Distance, where you played young Xanort. Yeah. 
Uh, and then, like, in the, and, I, and I came over to uh, join playing uh, Birth by Sleep with you guys, because I never played any of the other ones aside from 1 and 2 of Chain of Memories. Oh. Excuse me. And um, so I came over because I wanted to try it out, and it was fun. Mm. And then you guys finished it without I'm me. I'm sorry. You shitbags. We're, yeah, we are shitbags. Um, it's not that like, I, I haven't mean, well, already seen the cutscenes on YouTube already or whatever, but... Yeah. <laughs> um, the same, but uh, but yeah, it was it was cool, and then um, so now you're fully you're mostly caught up, and then this week two point eight the final prologue uh, oh, oh chapter or whatever it is uh, was announced. Great. Uh, so so now you guys have to. <laughs> I, I'm forcing you at gunpoint to wait until that releases next year so we can play through Dream Drop Distance. I have together. no problem with that. I want to play Dream Drop Distance on a big screen. I, I'm not too much of a fan of the Kingdom Hearts on portables. I don't know what it is. I just don't like it. I like playing it on the big screen. I've heard good things about Triple D. Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, uh, they're apparently uh, integrating a lot of things <laughs> from uh, from that into the engine of Kingdom Hearts 3, even though it's a 3DS tile. Cool. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. And, it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it because for those of you who have not played it or if you don't, or you're not familiar with the whole mythos of uh, Kingdom Hearts in general... <laughs> um, Mine is the one that fucks everything up. Yeah, uh, basically. Ma- well, because there's time travel, yeah. and also as you described on that on that interview for Cage Insider, uh, you had no idea what the hell you were saying. Yeah, for yeah. Any of for your lines. any of my lines, I have no <laughs> like like that's one of those times where I'm like, oh guys, if you like Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance and you liked my partner, thank you so much. Don't give me any credit because I was basically just like parroting as much as they wanted me to do. Like I had no clue what any of that stuff. And, and was that with Bob Buchholz directing? I don't. I don't feel like like that was. I've done other Kingdom Hearts stuff with him, like the stuff that we did for uh, 2.5 HD Remix. That was with Bob, but okay. I don't. I don't recall if Bob was there for the. Because I know he's like the main. Uh, he's like the main director yeah. of the game, I believe. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so Heather and I are looking, or hope, are hoping what will happen, and what we're kind of looking forward to is the prospect of um, of uh, let's see, uh, you know, us going through the whole game, and when your cutscenes come up, just every time you be like. Oh, that's, that's what, what I was saying. saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, we don't know if that'll necessarily be the case, but you know, one one can certainly hope. I think so. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a Trevor Duvall actually. Uh-oh. What are you, what are you doing? Uh, what, what I'm gonna do oh, no. is I'm gonna pull up your IMDB and I wanna go oh. through your, your stuff and, and, oh. and talk about some of the most recent things you've been doing. Oh, so let's okay. See. Okay. Uh, starting off with the, the top one, uh, Norm of the North. Yes. What the hell is that? That is um, a new animated movie from, I believe, Lionsgate. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, yeah. It, oh, I do it, like the guys from Lionsgate. Yeah, those are guys Those guys are all cool. They, they're um, neat. So I'm sorry for saying, what the hell is that, all rudely. Guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job. Uh, no, this is, um, this is one with, um, oh gosh, uh, Rob Schneider playing like a polar bear whose uh, home is being invaded. And, uh, yep, and he like, goes to the big city, and I think he becomes, like, a celebrity, I think? Rob Schneider is a polar bear! <laughs> I, and I saw, I saw, I saw him next time that Gabriel, Gabriel Iglesias is in there, so I'll be watching it for him and not you. I know, so will I, that's fine, I'm a uh, fan of his. Top Hat begins, you are, uh... Top Cat. Top Cat, ca- top Cat. Say it right. Top Cat, you play a bunch you. of characters in the, uh, I believe, produced for the Spanish-speaking world, right? Yes, that's uh, correct. Top Cat animated movies, which have some... Really beautiful animation from the trailers I've seen. Mm. Uh, but you're in that with, uh, I think, a couple of your Kids Next Door cast members. I, I'm I right. believe so. Um, Jason is, I, yeah, is in there. I think Jason is still in this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah he is in. Uh, oh, Chris Edgerly's in it. Oh, gosh. He's funny. He's awesome. David Boat's in it. Uh, Fellow organization member. Yes. Um, plenty, of, plenty of awesome guys. Oh, GK Bows. Yay. He's cool, too. Uh, yeah, those are neat. I saw that and I was like, oh, I didn't know Ben was in that. There's so much shit that I just like don't ever know that you're even in in the first place. Oh, there's uh, stuff that I don't even know I'm in. <laughs> you don't even remember. I get high a lot. I'm just kidding. I don't. Yeah, to- totally. I'm a yeah. druggie. That's yeah, me. Yeah, man. That's, oh, yeah. that's you, Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> uh, you were in the Mad Max video game. Yeah, that's... I got to play um, one of these scavengers. No, that's, I don't think that's right. The War, the war, the war Boys. Boys. Oh, yeah. sweet. Cool, cool. So I was okay. one of the guys that, that one. Oh, my God. Uh, like, I mean, like, Chris Zimmerman still apologizes to me 
for that session because that was two hours of some of the most gut wrenching screaming. Oh, I've that's ever got, done. that's gonna put like Call of oh, Duty to shame. It even. does. Oh, listen, the Call, Call of Duty gets like a bad rap because it used to be like that game where it was like, oh, dude, they're gonna be they're gonna ruin your voice. But like now, Call of Duty is kind of like, okay, we're only gonna do like one take of each line, and if unless we really need another one, we'll have another one. But otherwise, save your okay. voice, take okay. a break. This one was just like, nope. At the ha- at the hour and a half mark, and keep in mind, guys, I love yelling. I'm a big yeller. In when it comes to like video he's, games, he's an old and, yeller. I'm an old yeller. <laughs> woof, uh, woof. Uh, and he, but yeah, so uh, but yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah. I like yelling at the top of my lungs, and this was at the hour and a half mark. I was ready to just die. I could not handle this anymore. But it was like, oh, 30 more minutes, <laughs> and yeah, it felt like I was I'd coughed up acid for about three hours after that, just pure pain. But it was worth it because the performance actually turned out pretty darn good. So I liked it. Well, awesome. Uh, I will have to go look up some scenes with you in it. Uh, Tome, terrain of magical expertise. What the mm. fuck is that? Oh, uh, I'm gonna unzip. Like... I'm gonna unzip my sweater. I hope no one minds. Oh, that's hot. To rub my nipples and mm. happiness. All oh, just because it's hot in here. Yeah. Uh, because you're here. Oh. So, uh, Hulk and the Agents of Smash. I think this was just starting when we interviewed you on Wachow. Actually, I believe so. That think, sounds right. Yeah, I think you were like beginning to record it, but you so you play Scar. Yes. Who is a major character? Yay. Um, Scar fun. <laughs> <laughs> Scar is stupid and big and you, Ben like play. Yeah, yeah. 52 episodes you did in yeah. that series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I guess kind of following on that too, you also play in, in that current Marvel animated universe, you're Spider Ham. I'm Spider Ham. I'm Blood Spider. Uh, I'm somebody who I don't think I can mention because I don't think the episode is aired yet, uh, but he's a bad guy. Okay. Yay. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Fun. Uh, that's that's a cool one, and, you get, and you get to do all those ensemble with a bunch of yes, a bunch of really people. funny, talented people. Who are um, all awesome. And you have worked with Seth Seth, Seth Green sometimes is in on. Uh, I think <laughs> so, sometimes the the final episode he was there. Okay, uh, okay. and I he's think a busy man. He's a soup. Yeah, <laughs> Seth, Seth Green is a really nice guy, but he is a busy, busy fucker. Yeah. That dude is everywhere. So like, I don't blame him for not like sticking around for four hours. I, w- I wonder if he records yeah. ensemble with turtles. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. I'd be surprised. That would be cool. Um, Baron Underwear, a TV movie. Yeah, that was a uh, a short for Amazon. Okay. Do you think anybody's finding any of this shit interesting? I I I'm finding. I'm just I'm just talking about whatever. Okay. So, I mean, hey. I mean, I'm I've... I'm stealing Trevor Duvall's voice print uh, method of, of doing shit. So I'm, oh. I'm going to just do it that way. Sorry, Trevor. And pretend that I'm I'm your intrepid host, Trevor Duvall. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a better Trevor than than me. Oh. I... Um. He's oh. he's actually. Uh, currently in the Marvel Animated Universe also, as yes, he's, he is. he's now Rocket Raccoon, which That's, is amazing. Yeah. Oh, I met him. Oh, did you get to meet him? I, I did. I bumped into him at uh, Bang Zoom. Oh, okay. I, I said hi pretty briefly, but cool, yeah, cool. he's a nice guy. Have you, have you hadn't met him before? No. Okay. Cool, cool. Did he, did he like, know of you? Or, no. Like, know anything? Oh, oh, okay. Of course not. Did no. he think you were just, like, some kid? Like, Probably. Like, <laughs> Fine, I don't care. I mean, he's he's been actually. I think you have technically been working in this industry longer than he has even. That's the weird thing is that I'm really not that old, but because I've been doing it since I was a kid, technically yeah. I've been doing it longer yeah, than yeah, some yeah. of the bigger guys. Well, he was in one of like the t- you, well, you, you. But that's the other crazy thing is you grew up with his stuff because he was in every ocean group dubbed anime in existence yep. back in the day. So. <laughs> um, Lord of Magna, Made in Heaven. Yes. RPG game, I assume. You are correct. Because it sounds like one. It sure is. Uh, Digimon Fusion, which we did a whole curb log about. Yes, so I won't. we won't do that again. Uh, okay. Except I'll make you do Cutemon again, because I want it. Oh, sure, at 10.50 at night. Yeah. yeah. Sure, okay, yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It would be like your, the, the clip that they happen to have of you on behind the voice actors. That one, I hate that clip so much because I was like sick when I did that. So it's like, oh, guys, that's <laughs> annoying. Like, and, so it's, really and it's still adorable and I'd squeeze his head off. Oh, you're um, nice. You hear that, BT, BTVA? Replace that clip with something else. Do it. Fix it. Or I'll come over there and kick your... Mm. <laughs> Kick your mm? Yeah, I can't uh, say that word. It's oh, okay. bad. It's okay. naughty. It's bad. Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> um, stop the the glad to kids next door part one. Oh, that's. Mm, oh. I don't know why that's on IMDb. Let's skip that one. Uh, oh, so, uh, here's a you know, here's here's one that's near dear to my heart. Uh, Sick bricks. Oh yes. Yes. So you do both the web series. Yes. Uh, and the uh, the animated or sorry the animated the video game. Yes. Uh, Correct. Uh, which I got to work on as Yay. many characters and actually. You play certain characters that I did in the game. That's right. In the web series, and you did completely different voices for them. Yeah, like one of them is like a, a mouse that's like Batman, but it's like Batman. Yeah, what but, is uh, it? uh, what's his uh, name? Night Rat. Night Rat. That's yes. right. Like uh, they had me for like this shorts do like this like oh oh oh. 
Oh, God, what's the dude's name? Latest Batman movie. Oh, uh, Christian Bale. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah. Figured, I figured that's what they had you do. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're like... <laughs> that, that kind of thing. And then I guess for like the video game, they're like, oh, that would be terrible. Don't do that. Well, no, I, it wasn't even that. I, I don't even think I tried... I think I just I think I just played him straight. Like if if I if Batman were like fourteen and I were and I were to do him <laughs> somehow because I didn't even attempt to imitate like like Kevin Conroy or anybody. Uh, and then I also did um, uh, Bucky Blastoff, who I have a little toy of over there. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but you played him, I think, with like a lisp or something because he was like a little chipmunk guy. Oh, I don't know if I actually. Played no, you him. you definitely did oh, him. I did? Yeah, there's there's one of him up there somewhere. Oh, but, oh okay. Uh, but you don't remember because you do so much shit. For for that show, I mean, like, because it's basically it's me and Robbie Damon. By the way, behind the voice actors, it's not James Arnold yes, Taylor. Yes, I corrected them on that already. So okay, hopefully good. by the time this comes out, maybe they'll have changed that. Yeah, I'm hoping. but yeah, it's literally, it's just me and Robbie doing basically every single character except for the women. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Star Wars <laughs> Rebels, you were in an episode. I uh, Yep. That's pretty cool. That's fun. Uh, Till Morning's Light, uh, which could Christina V yep. direct that, right? Yep, yep. Was that for Way Forward? I think? That's correct. Okay, awesome. As Elijah. Yes. Would. Mm -hmm. um, I would. <laughs> um, Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric. Yeah. Quincy. That is uh, that is my crowning achievement. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hey, which... Nice kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, do you want to do you want to reveal where you got that oh, from? Oh yeah, um, I think they wanted like a Don Knotts thing, but I just really started. I tried to do that. I'm not very good at impressions. I think I wound up doing a terrible impression of Team Four Stars Krillin, and of I what, just Landy Petoris. Oh hey guys! Yeah oh, exactly. Oh jeez, yeah. mm -hmm. stealth mode. Don't feel me now. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, Team Four Star. <laughs> Yay! Yes. Uh, we'll get you in DVZ approach at some point. Just give it time. <laughs> Call of Duty Advanced Warfare as the illustrious character of additional voices. Yep, I got to go in there and yell as a soldier. He shows up a lot in like a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah that dude's it's a very, 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 very iconic character. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sunset Overdrive. Uh, this, this is one that I'm very happy about. Uh, pre the artist formerly known as... Uh, Melvin, Melvin yeah. now known by his correct name, Gurio Lumino. Lumino of Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon, uh, Sailor Moon Crystal, which yes. you guys are working on and will be coming out soon, I believe. I think so. And uh, and of course, uh, in the new uncut redub yes. of, uh, the original. of the original Sailor Moon, which I've been loving the shit out of. That's fun. Um, and uh, he hmm? cracks my shit up. Good. Like he I'm glad. genuinely makes me laugh. I'm really glad that they let me improv with that guy. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. kind of surprised that they do. You, you and uh, uh, Danielle Nicole uh, <laughs> on, uh, on, on uh, not Molly. Yes. Yeah. Nar Naru. Naru, uh, yes. Na Naru Osaka. Are you, you, do, you two are adorable. Yeah. Um, have you done any new episodes with him? I mean, it's not really a spoiler because people know oh. what the episodes are. Um, but, I uh, show not for a long while what was the honest. most recent one the re most recent one i think you did was the one with the the relationship contest or something yes. right okay yeah they're trying to like show their love for each other in like yeah. a, like a weird not like the newlywed type thing but like like with like relationship action. contest yeah. yeah and i think ne and neptune and uranus just like fucking completely obliterate everybody because yep. they're they're perfect <laughs> um kingdom hearts hd 2.5 remix young zehanort how do you say that Zeanort. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced like Hanort. Hanort. Yeah. Um, Rune Factory Four, where I was uh, a shelter. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I'm, just, I'm just being an ass. <laughs> where, 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 where I was a little kid. Named Kiel. Yeah, named Kiel. I'm gonna kill like, you. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. We did a bunch of stuff. Those I was mostly guys. Wack Forty Seven. It was like a, an android. Oh, uh, it was a pit droid, cool. I should say specifically. Oh, here's here's one that makes me smile. Yeah, the Alpha and Omega post the original one. Yes, you voice match Justin Long. Right, and by voice match, I just talk like me. <laughs> and I, apparently, I sound like Justin Long. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. I'll I mean, take it. You it's know. easy. It's fun. Uh, here's a new one. I'll know a zero. The one yes. just coming came out over here. Yes, I play the dude who dies. Oh. I play the guy who dies in a fire. <laughs> wow, wow, way to just spoil that one. It's fine. It's Wait. like it's backstory for one of the characters of why he's all messed up. It's like he let his friend died, and it's revealed pretty early on. Fair enough. But okay. Still, God. Maybe, maybe I wanted to watch it. Maybe I wanted to get attached to your character and then cry over him. You wouldn't. My character dies in like one episode. <laughs> wow. You're just a massive dickhole. I know. You? Yeah. Uh, Team Hot Wheels: The Origin of Awesome as, yeah. as uh, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> yeah. That's a. Incredibly, that's like the most normal name we've that, seen so far. Yeah, he's a nice um, guy. I, he's cool. I, I would hope so. Yeah. Wild Star. I was Oren Male. And Creature. Yes, that's I like did. That's the TF2 kind of fantasy type of game, right, I think? Yes, that's correct. Tech Guy Knights Toxa. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, I watched, like, a fair amount of that show for, oh. about, like, 13 episodes worth or so. Yeah. 
and and you were you were funny. It's a fun show. Yeah, he was I the green it. guy. Oh, sad story. Hmm? We went to Spin Masters, which is the headquarters of where oh. they create these spin the uh, Spin Masters. They would create the Sick Bricks and uh, uh, Tenkai Knights toys. Yeah. And they had like a giant foam like Tenkai Knights shield. Oh, it was right? so cool looking, and we like made it to the car. We got it in safely. I was gonna. And hang it was that. raining. Yeah. And yeah. We, we didn't get damaged. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Guys, me, me and Ben and, and uh, Xander Mobis and Edward Bosco all went there. Yeah. And you got, like, the standees as well, I think, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, like, the big, like, poster cutout guys. Yeah. yeah. of some of the, from, for Sick Bricks. But, like, yeah, the shield guys was, like, I think about four feet tall and even was maybe about, like, an, uh, a foot and a half deep. And it was, like, a, a detailed Valorn shield made out of foam cut to match and painted really cool well. Shit, it yeah. was awesome. So they said, like, dude, we're going to, like, throw this out because we kind of need to get rid of some stuff. Do you want it? I'm like, hells yeah. So I bring it home. We got we we, we took so much care to get it. Uh, nice hairy chest, by the way. Thank you. Uh, he really did open his sweater, um, sweatshirt. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, we we took careful. We got into the car. Everything was fine. Got it home. I'm bringing it in uh, in the parking lot. I'm holding it in front of me. I tripped over one of those stupid um, parking space things that like stops the wheels of your car. Fell and landed on it and broke into a million pieces. That's such a like sitcom moment. It really that was. And it was, just, it was God, you could even hear like that. Oh no! And like the audience yeah. going. Ah, like, Canned laughter. Uh, crap. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll I'll have to make you a giant life size uh, foam oddball someday to yes. make up for it. And, I, yeah. Make and, it out of like a beanbag chair with just yes. like his head sticking out of it. Yeah. And shove shove it up your butt. Perfect. In in oddball style. Ha. Uh, this is a cool one. Uh, kill a kill. Yay. Uh, as Takaharu Fukuroda for mm-hmm. one thing from the first episode, the little boxer kid. Who That's was right. Hilarious. And uh, Kaneo Takarada, mm-hmm. uh, who. I, I was I was quite uh, surprised and and happy that they kind of took a little bit of I guess a risk on doing something very different with him. Yeah. Uh, he he talks I guess kind of like a pimp more or less. Mm-hmm. And I because I, I think they they were from Osaka. Yes, right? that's correct. And and generally I've found in other anime dubs when there are characters with an Osaka dialect they tend to give them either like a southern accent right. or like a New York accent or something kind of along those lines. Yeah. And so they kind of went that route with you. And uh, yeah, he was he was he was pretty he was pretty nice. He was nice. Mm-hmm. He was he had he had that nice grill going on. Yeah, in his yeah. Teeth. yeah. That was one of those things where like <laughs> uh, Alex von David, who was the voice director and also the um, uh, the script adapter, was basically like, okay, he has a grill, he wears fur, he acts like a pimp, and he flails money all over the place. Can we just write him as a pimp? And he basically just got the okay, and he was like, Anaplex was like, yeah, do it. And he was like, oh, do oh, it, okay. So, all, all right. And so he kept, like, checking stuff, like, you're sure this is okay? And they're like, yeah, that's funny. Do it. Didn't you have, like, a line <laughs> that, that a lot of people ask you to do? Like, at cons. Oh, oh, uh, uh, oh, usually I'll, I'll get somebody saying, like, hey, uh, uh, ask if you can, like, wop it out or something like that. Because there's like there was, like, a meme going on for a while uh, with Takarada as, like, a, a cockney guy. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, Huh. Shut your mouth and look at my ward. It was like, <laughs> there you go. There's the thing that he never said in the show. <laughs> and he goes, that's not even what he sounds like. Nope. <laughs> uh, let's see. Lego movie, the video game, Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13, Skylander, Swap Force, Blood Lad as a werewolf that Bosco was very sad about not getting because oh, he loves his werewolves. Someday he will get a werewolf. Okay, he'll, he'll forgive you. Yeah. Rhino in Marvel Heroes. Yes. Who you also did, I think, in... Nope. No? Just that. Oh, okay, it was just... I, feel, I thought you played him in something else. My bad. Nah. Uh, Shade of the Changing Man. I don't know what that is. Oh, that was a TV short. That was actually really cool. It was one dude who animated the whole thing. Huh. And it was, like, really, like, artistic and badass. I will have to look that up. Yeah, I would recommend it. It's okay. neat. Uh, Naruto Shippuden. Oh uh, yes, uh, one of the Psych- many, <laughs> many, many Naruto games. I think there's like 25 at, by this point. Well, just the series in general, but you play Sai. Uh, yes. Uh, as your as your main character of, of a few. Yes. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about how 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 just filled with personality Sai is. Uh, Sai is basically um, he has no emotions. Because they've been sort of beaten out of him, but the best way of describing him, and I swear I don't mean this to be offensive, I know somebody's going to get mad at me, but I, I swear I'm not, is that he's basically autistic. He, he really has, like, a hard time understanding how people feel, and it really, like, it basically messes with his ability to socialize. And so it's kind of played for laughs, but depending on how you look at it, it's actually kind of, like, 
it's, it's pretty tragic, well, to be he, honest. He gets along with Naruto, like, eventually later. Because I think when, Way he's, later. when he starts, Way later. he's, like, the replacement for Sasuke for Team 7. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, he's a dickhole. And then yeah. later, like, they get to know him better and they like him. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I might have... I don't think I've ever talked about this on a career blog before. I've always kind of had this theory... This is kind of going off topic a little mm-hmm. bit. But I've always kind of had this theory that a lot of main... This is... Again, speaking, I made the, the retard comment earlier. This is speaking as someone who is technically autistic, guys. Mm. Uh, I've always kind of had this theory mm. that a lot of the main characters from many shonen anime, I think I just told you this recently, yeah. have a lot of signs of being autistic. Because you think about, like, you know, Goku, Luffy, Naruto, a lot of them. They're very, like, fixated on, like, whatever it is that they like, their they're, they're eye on the prize and, like... You know, they're completely infallible as to whatever it is that they're obsessed with and what their, their goal is. And, you know, they can be a little socially unacceptable sometimes. And they can be a little annoying to people. And, like, you know, they, the people berate them for doing irresponsible, stupid things, you know. So, and even Naruto, you know, for, like, he's just so obsessed with, like, I want to be the Hokage. I want to get Sasuke back. I want Sakura to notice me. I want this. And I'm going to do it. So there. And I'm crazy and zany and ridiculous. It's like, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's... It's probably not intended, no. but, but I think that that's like like if, if you if you could interpret it that way, it's kind of like oh that's like a little bit of like an, a possible extra layer of depth behind them. Sure. And Sai being like sure I don't agree with that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean I mean for real, like, like with Sai, it's like that's I, that that's perfectly plausible. I think that could that could be. Yeah, I mean I mean there is an actual explanation as to why he's like that. There's also like a jutsu sealed on him and something. Oh, like, okay. So then when that gets revealed, then when that gets removed, suddenly he has a person. Personality. So, oh, does he? Yeah. So, oh. so to, to be so, so what? Fair, so what is more personality side like compared to the other? He's normal? he's a lot more like like he, his voice. To be honest, I think sounds different. Um, really? Yeah, like he, he speaks more like the way I speak right now. Oh. Like he doesn't. There's not that hello there, how are you? Kind oh. of soft spoken. Mm-hmm. Sort of like oh hey guys, how are you? You know, it's just kind of like hey yeah, I'm, I actually can oh uh, we, we, really? interact normally. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Okay. It, huh. He changes quite a bit because I keep up with whatever the hell's going on in the story through like whenever a video game comes out and I just watch all the cuts. Scenes. Fair enough. But I remember, I think when when like the one of the first she put in games was coming out, I heard that you were in that because I knew you played some other like random characters in the first Naruto show. So when you got, I was like like filler guys. And oh stuff, yeah. I think. yeah, I was Arashi Fuma from like one of the filler episodes towards the very very end of Naruto. Yeah, 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 like the the seven hundred episodes of filler. Yep. Um, but so I knew you were in that because I knew you were doing anime by that point because I'd seen like Blood Plus and all that, which we'll mm-hmm. get to, and uh, and then. Um, what was it? So when I heard that you were Sai, I looked up a clip of like the first Shippuden game, and you were like, "What's the mission?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's about right." <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Ben. Uh, let's see, Sardonical Dino Time, Halo Four. That yes, was Miller. I, didn't, I forgot you were in Halo. This one is not that's real. A big one. I don't know oh. why that's there. Oh. I, I was never in High Fructose Adventures of Annoying Orange. Oh yeah, oh, that's strange. I was not no, in that. I don't know why that's that there. One. Lollipop Chainsaw, mm-hmm. Superman of Tokyo. Yeah, those are those uh, DC shorts, yeah. Final Fantasy XIII, Young Young Justice. That's a big one. Yeah, William Hayes. Harm. Hayes. Harm. 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 What was his superpower? Uh, he has. He was like uh, possessed by a demon deliberately. It was something along those lines, and I think he had like the sword of. Oh God, it's it's. I'm drawing a blank. The on sword of omens. No, Give no, no. me sight beyond sight. No, no, no. Okay, uh, what was the name? Of that movie that they made in like all 3D, it was meant to look realistic. Oh, uh, Avatar? No, 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 no. It was just way before that, and it didn't look as good. Oh, it was. It's like a classic hero. It's not Greek hero. It's older than that. Oh, uh, uh, fuck. Fuck balls. Fuck. I don't know. I I will remember it at like four in the morning. I'll call you. <laughs> They'll just call me up in a cold sweat. Chris, it was. Yeah. It was the sort of homies. You were right all along. Uh, yeah. let's see. Oh, oh, okay, so, well, this is, this isn't the actual show, but, uh, Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. Yes, a video game. Yes, a video game. Uh, number one and number two of Codename Kids Next Door. Yeah, well, uh, sort of. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean, but the characters. Right. Probably, if, if not your most well-known, but among the, the biggest roles of your, of your entire career. Yes. Um, do you love them so? I, I do. Imagine. They are awesome. Uh, any any uh, any any comments about that show in uh, general? Uh, that show was like a one in a million thing. It was really really awesome. It came completely out of nowhere for me, mm. uh, and um, I 
I am really, really grateful for it. That's the best way I can put it. I know we did talk about this before. I'm, pretty, mm-hmm. I'm sure you probably told the story a lot in other cons and stuff. But so, but you got cast as number two, and the number one was another kid, and then it was Tom right. Kenny. Uh, it was Tom Kenny. Then it was another kid. Okay. Right, uh, right. Then yeah, and it was yeah. I mean, he's getting a text message. He's very important. Sorry. Sorry. Give it a second. It's it's as a professional voice actor, I made sure to not turn off my fucking phone <laughs> before recording something because I'm smart. You silly butt. Anyway, there we go. Uh, yeah, no. So to uh, to what, what happened was, um, Tom originally wanted Sue Rose, uh, who I believe that's her name. I might have to double check. Uh, she was the voice of Angela Anaconda, which was a uh, cartoon show that was on. Oh, Back in the nineties, right. I forgot about this. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, so he wanted to just give that role to her and uh, Colette so, no, Sunderman. Number, number one, number two. Oh, okay. And uh, Colette Sunderman said, "You know, why don't you just like let some people audition for it and just just in case, see what you think." And he was like, okay. well, "All right, fine." And so I auditioned for that, and he was like, "You know, I might have to tell Sue she's out of a job. I like this guy." Mm. So that was really cool. Um, then what happened was he wanted to have Tom Kenny originally for number one. Because uh, he liked working with Tom, Because he had obviously. done Kenny on Kenny and the Chimp. And That's that, right. And that was kind of like his professor, Triple Extra Large, was in that was sort of, I guess, in the universe of, of exactly. Kids Next Door. Yeah. Uh, well, originally, Kids Next Door was supposed to be a villain for uh, to, uh, uh, Kenny to deal uh, with. Oh. Yes. They were originally supposed to be bad guys if that show got picked up. Huh. They were going to be like the Kids Next Door who bother him. That no, was the idea. shit. Yes. Oh, and it okay. became its own thing. I'm learning new things today. There you go. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but unfortunately, the voice uh, for Tom Kenny was doing it just didn't it wasn't exactly what he was looking for. So then he tried a real kid. That kid was great. His voice changed, so that we had he had to recast for a third time. Well, I guess technically a second time recast. And um, uh, he had me audition. I think he had D audition for number one too. And he wound up picking me. So then that show had to go on to win Cartoon Network's Big Pick, which was up against like nine other shorts. Yeah. It did that, and then that's why it became a series. So that's why, if you look at my like IMDb page before Kids Next Door, it looks like, oh, he was like a recurring character on Hey Arnold, something I don't know called Problem Child animated series, whatever, who cares? Bunch of little tiny things, and then bam! It's yeah. like it's like this thing where I'm like two of the main characters on this really <laughs> successful show that a lot of people grew up with. And by the time that you did that show, did you get upgraded to the adult division of your agency? Because you were in the kids division for a while, right? Yes, I up I went to the adult division when I was 16. So okay. I was. I was there for that, yeah. So were you 16, 17 or so when Candy got picked up? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I think I was – that was that was a weird transitional period where I was still represented by both uh, divisions. So okay. Kids Next Door I was doing through the kids division. Uh, and so my agent who has since moved on, I believe to form her own agency or to join a different one. Her name is uh, Portia Scott Hicks. She negotiated a fantastic contract for me, and uh, I got to work on that show, and it was like a dream come true. Um, but yeah, at that time, that was through the kids' division, while uh, the adult division was slowly but surely taking me uh, over to their side. Okay, uh, I loved that show. It and, was fun. Uh, you know, I it's mean, awesome. I I see like the fandom now, and I'm not surprised at all because it was very much a show that like, you know, I've talked about this I think in other career blogs about how it was it's it's, a, it's that type of show with the whole universe you can like really sink your teeth into like. like mm-hmm really like expand outward with all these different characters and stuff and so many people love like i mean i'm not just you guys but like all all of the main five uh but but like hoagie and nigel particularly and people would ship the hell out of them with all these different characters <laughs> you know and not to make fun i mean like you know, it's, yeah it was, it was kind of cool in that in that regard <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, and, and I guess you, after that point, your career, like, really kind of took off, like, uh, you were no. just following. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. no, no, really? No, I went pretty much back into obscurity. I think the biggest thing I did between now, uh, and then was probably Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, and that was pretty much it. Like, most of the stuff were little small things here and there. Okay. Cause, well, yeah. But had you done, no, you had done, had you done Naruto and Bleach yet? Oh, that was yes. I mean, Ryan Blood Plus too. That was your yeah. first anime. It's it's yeah. kind of, it's it's weird because it's kind of hard to count anime as like a big deal unless it's like a really big deal show. Yeah. Oh, I mean to be fair, all those series were on TV. So I mean, That's that true. was that was a big thing for one thing. Yeah. And Blood Plus and, and Naruto were among the rare. Uh, you know, you, I mean, people. Some people know this. They were the, among the rare dubs that are union. Yeah. Because uh, that doesn't happen too much these days. Nope. Sadly not. Um. So, so that's that's why you don't hear guys like Crispin Freeman and Steve Bloom in very many anime anymore, is because they're union only. <laughs> yep. Um, but uh, 
Well, on that note, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, which I need to watch. You really been, do. It's been fun. saying that for ages. It's but... 26 episodes. You can, you can marathon oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that shit. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But uh, Eddie Brock, Venom, mm-hmm. huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember looking up an interview of you at like Comic Con or something. Oh, where I was just like, "Oh my god, Comic Con!" Oh no, you were just like, you just looked so like uncomfortable. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Eddie Brock, and I'm I'm really excited about it. And also, I don't want to be here. <laughs> what? Wait, which one? No, was no, this? no, not like you didn't want to be there, but you just you. It was it was very adorable. You looked very just like nervous of what, like I don't. Was I wearing like a striped shirt? Yes, I like, think like so. Like light blue. Yeah, it was something. like somebody with like one of those like block microphones to show what yeah. they were from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just look very like yeah. I'm really excited and I'm nervous. Kind oh, of. <laughs> I was very nervous. I was yeah. I didn't dislike it, but I was definitely nervous. Yeah. Yeah, no, you weren't. No, sorry. I didn't, when I say I don't want to be here, like no, this sucks. I'm too good for this shit. It was just <laughs> you just looked very like. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah uh, that was deer uh, caught in headlights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. But no, I, yeah, I do need to watch that show for sure at some point. Uh, Blood Plus, mm-hmm. Kai, which I recognized you right away as because I was like, oh, that sounds like number one. It's, it's just my voice. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just me talking. <laughs> this one. Uh, my favorite, my favorite all-time role. Oh, Han from two whole beautiful episodes <laughs> of Avatar: The Last Airbender, the Yay. season one two-parter finale. Did it. Uh, yes, Soka. <laughs> <laughs> I booked that job because I mispronounced uh, Sokka's name. It's spelled S-O-K-K-A. And I was like, oh, like Japanese, Sokka. Oh, so I'll call him Sokka. Sokka. Yeah. yeah, and it was like, nope. <laughs> Apparently it's pronounced Sokka. And so they just thought it was funny that I kept butchering his name, and that's oh, why they hired me. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, and that was was that your I think was that your first and so far only time working with Andrea Romano? I believe so. Okay. I don't think I've worked with her since. Was I'm that not sure. was that was that cool as shit? Yeah, it was fun. I'm assuming you must have known about like her reputation by that point. Uh, I'd auditioned for her a lot okay. at that point, so like I I I'd, I'd, I'd known she's done like tons of stuff. Did she did she like recognize you when you came in? I don't I don't think she did. Okay. No. Well, either That's way, cool. I'm, sure, I'm sure you were I'm sure you were a, a joy. Ah. Being a douchebag. For yeah. all oh, two totally. Of those <laughs> uh, oh, oh, this is a good one. Rogue Galaxy. Yeah. Jupus Tuki McGannell. Yes. I, uh, that was. That was... <laughs> can you share the story behind this one? I don't think. I don't think the the man in question is ever going to hear this. So I okay. think you're pretty safe. So the uh, the this this is one of those things where when the director is really on top of things. Everything goes swimmingly. Mm-hmm. Um, for this one, I don't know if they did this deliberately or not, but they did not uh, take into account the way the other characters were going to be played. So everybody in this, in like the main cast, I'm one of the playable characters that you find later on in the game to join your party, but everybody else is playing it pretty darn straight. So it's just sort of like, you know, okay, guys, we got to invade that castle. Are you guys ready? I am ready, this, my This beige. is one of those rare... Uh or like Japanese games that actually had like cartoon actors in it. Yeah. I think like Scott Menville and a bunch of people were yeah. in it. Yeah, uh, it was uh, Will Dell was the main character in that. Oh, shit, wow. Yeah, okay. so, yeah no, it was great. And so the, they're all playing it like super you know, realistic. We're going to go in there. We're going to get it. What do you think, Jupus? Let's go in there and kick their fucking asses! Yeah! <laughs> and, that's, and, 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 so, and so it's like this massively jarring performance oh, difference between God. us. To this day, like, I played the game and I was like, oh, my God, I am the cheesiest character oh, in this. Man. Wow. But... You know, it was still fun, so I can't. I can't really make you know and, fun and of it too much. And would you like to share what you derived that voice from? Oh, because <laughs> I, oh. I don't think he's ever going to hear that. Okay, so <laughs> I think you'd be flattered if you found out. If okay, anything. I hopefully if you're listening, I'm sorry. Uh, so you guys maybe are familiar with a little company called Four Kids. Mm. Uh, they made a dub of One Piece. Yes, back in this this would have been 2005 when mm. that was uh, right in the depths of that. Yeah. So. so the character description for this character was that he's kind of over the top and kind of annoying. And I thought of uh, Usopp from that and just did an impression of that. And that's and how Jason I got Jason Griffiths. Oh, yeah. hey, everybody, triple exploding stars. That's the one. And, uh, yeah, and So it, you had seen enough to just even know of that by that point. Yep. So what, what does it say that you were not on Naruto or Bleach yet, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you had seen enough of One Piece on that dub? On, you, you, you had to have gotten up on Saturday morning to mm-hmm. see that. Yep. And did an imitation of it for a fucking audition. <laughs> yep. That really says something. It really says something about how, how amazing One Piece is. Even, even though you were like, oh, this shit was stupid at the time. Well, yeah. so, Someday I'll get him to watch it, guys. Oh, Just you give, never know. Give me, give me time. Uh, let's see. Ratchet and Clank. Dra- Drake and Josh? Yeah, I was on Drake and Josh. Live action. Yeah. 
No shit. Yeah. As a mean teacher. No, 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 no. That's the episode title. Oh, oh yeah. No, no, like a student. Yeah, I was a student. My character was like joining a cult. It was. It was the 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 the, the plot was. Um, Josh fa- finds a shirt that he claims is lucky, and he goes around saying, "No, no, it's a lucky shirt." And Drake's like, "Dude, no bullshit. It's not lucky." And everywhere he goes, something great happens. So I say to him, "Like, hey, so my family's joining a cult, and I'm not allowed what? to have any earthly possessions. So here's all my video games." <laughs> Uh, it's really gonna suck when I have to get my head shaved, and like, that's what it was. I need to look this episode up yeah. after we're done recording. Yay! Uh, also, you were teen number two in the Fat Albert movie with oh. Keenan Thompson. Yeah, as in that takes place within the animated world of Hey Ar- of, of Hey Arnold, of Fat Albert, as well as the real world. I was in the animated world oh, as like okay. bully gotcha, teens. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. so that was just okay. voiceover. But cool. I do still have a sweatshirt that says Fat Albert, two thousand four. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, Drake. Well, Drake and Josh. Funnily enough, is excuse me. You are um, you're you're working with Drake. Yeah, on uh, um, Spider-Man, Spider-Man all the time, mm-hmm. uh, as well as another thing possibly that I don't think he's he's known for yet. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, what the hell else? But oh, have you met Josh Peck? Y- well, I mean, on the set of uh, Drake and Josh. Yes, okay. Very briefly. Was he cool? Yeah, that dude. That dude was a player. That, really? That dude. And this was back when he was like chubby. Yeah. He, he was like getting numbers like really? all the time on set. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dang, shouldn't it be the other way around that like Drake's the one? Doing I mean, that? I remember when nope. both of them were on like all like the Nickelodeon TV shit and everything. Yeah, like I think they were on all that together. No, uh, Drake was on the Amanda Show, and I think, right, I right. think Josh was also on that, and Josh was also in Harriet the Spy with uh, Michelle. Ah. Uh, which, which she was on Pete and Pete. Oh, okay. With, with my sister. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, and he's he's really good on on uh, Spider Man as Casey Jones as well. Oh, uh, Josh Peck. Yeah, he's pretty cool. On Casey Jones on Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Oh, Ninja Turtles. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. sorry. There uh, we go. Uh, yeah, just... Casey Jones. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> uh, the no P and the all the 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 pilot for Kids Next Door is on here. Well, you yeah. were in a hundred deeds for Eddie McDowd. Yes. Re- on camera. Yeah. Really? Yeah, that was I wow. played like a nerd who gets his science experiment exploded. Oh my god! I used to like actually watch a lot of that show. Back oh, in the day. that's crazy. Neat. Uh, hey Arnold, mm-hmm. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll end this segment with that now. So Hey Arnold, that was that was your first like that's like really really big show. Uh, uh, yeah, that was. Okay. That was, I was the third voice to voice Eugene because this was one of those really rare shows back in the day where all the kids were played by kids, with the exception, I guess, technically of Harold. Uh, uh, well, he was, a kid, he was a kid when they did the pilot, and then by uh-huh. the time they got the series, he was a teenager, and he just had the, like, eh, <laughs> good, that, that. Yeah. <laughs> just and they just Adam kept it. Sandler. <laughs> 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 well, Harold kind of was the Adam Sandler of that yeah. show. <laughs> and he was Jewish. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, the Jewish bully. <laughs> You you also are a Jewish of, bully of, of the of the, yes you, yeah you pick on me quite quite frequently like quit hitting you, yourself like, quit like, hitting like yourself you, curb yeah like when you take pictures of me and <laughs> with, with my shirt off and your fucking boobs <laughs> you piece of shit put it on Twitter only for a few seconds <sighs> yeah you piece of shit anyway <laughs> uh, hey Arnold um, mm-hmm. do you remember that uh, very vaguely <sighs> okay it's it's kind of it's going back a little too far who for was, me. who was Arnold at that point was that Philip uh, oh it might have been I mean I was there for I think at least two of the Arnolds. Really? Yes. Okay. I don't think I was there for the original. So the tran- yeah, the transitions Arnold. were kind of overlapping. Yeah, because yeah. the original one, cause, no, because by the time you were doing episodes, Torvald, was, uh, was, no, 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 sorry, not Torvald, uh, yeah. Wolfgang. Wolfgang was a character, and he was played by the first Arnold, I believe. I, I believe uh, no, no, Torvald. Second, second. I think Torvald was played by the original Arnold. Was he? I think so. Wait, Torvald was the nice big guy. No, 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 he was the bully. No, no, not the bully. No, Tor- Torvald started as a bully, and then he became a good guy. Oh, okay. But then Wolfgang was, I, he was one of the previous Arnolds, and mm. then Philip was doing it. And then you were the, th- so you, I thought you were the second one. No, reason. the second one was actually Jared Lennon, who was uh, the kid who played my best friend in a movie called Just Like Dad. Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah. Okay, which you're also in there, Charlie Spiegel. Yeah. Um, is that the one with that, that one scene where you're like, you got the glasses and you're making some dorky joke or something and you like, yeah, or something. I feel like you li- <laughs> you, you link to some clip on, on, your, on your Twitter sometime of like, here's me in a really weird movie that I did one time and it was like black and white or something. Is that just like that? Maybe what? it was something else. I don't. Or maybe it was a TV show. I don't There's some no clip you linked to. It was like ages ago. Oh. It was funny. Okay. It was so weird. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, and then you worked with, let's see, well, Fran, Fran, Franny, Franny, Fran, yes. uh, what's her last name? Helga. Helga, voice of Helga. Oh, Smith. Fran, yes. Fran, yeah, Fran, yeah, 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 yeah. She was 
amazing yeah. in that show all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, a- any distinct memories, or was it all just kind of... Because I remember you also voiced in one of my favorite episodes, Eugene Goes Bad. Yeah. <laughs> and all you remembered about it was that he goes bad. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he goes bad. It was something about a movie like character that he yeah was. the the abdicator. That's the abdicator. Yeah, the abdicator. Where is my lunch? Where is my apricot juice? <laughs> Which Mike Lucas and I would quote till the cows come home. Uh, oh, the Wonder Years. Yeah, I young was young Paul Pfeiffer. Yep, I was uh, a little tiny baby boy. Young Paul Pfeiffer, Paul, Paul, Paul Peter Pied. Yes, Pfeiffer. Uh, and you were a baby. And in, baby. Well, in eighty-seven. Well, I was five. <laughs> Just that's quite a bit. You've done a lot of shit. Yeah. My God, Ben Jamin. Um, well, we've we've kind of talked in and out about uh, you know different funny stories, but uh, any any really memorable like you know particular things that had happened. Um, well, I mean, I don't. I mean, you know, uh, I I don't know. Do you, I feel I feel like every time I do an interview, it's just me talking about myself. I mean, is there anything you're not a newbie to the voiceover industry because you've been doing this, you know, stuff in like I've New had York like five, and stuff. I've had five years of yeah. experience somewhat. I, I mean, as somebody who's relatively new out here, do you have any like questions? Do you think anybody listening would be interested in? Hearing? I was going to get to that. Oh, okay. Uh, that was going to be how to end it. But oh, okay. Uh, but but I mean, well, before that, then okay, because you've thrown off my entire order of of that I've stolen. You're from Trevor welcome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Trevor. <laughs> um, the, uh, do, do you have any, like, other, like, really memorable moments, like, in the booth with anybody, any funny or weird or oh. cool things that happens? Oh. Anything at all? It, it's all stuff that, like, I think is funny in context, but, like, if I mention it outside of it, it just makes no fucking sense. I, I mean, I don't know, whatever, anything. We're just talking. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, have to entertain them. Uh, I don't. No. Uh, no. I, I, I just do it and then I forget because I don't give a shit about anything I do. <laughs> That's not true. I just don't pay attention to like no. any of the funny booth antics. No, actually, actually to, be, to, to speak seriously, mm. you, you, are, you really do like get pretty invested in like most of the stuff that I you do. do. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, I'm not like absolutely everything, but like when you get something cool, you're really like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 well, then I guess on that, on that note, any other particular, maybe like obscure favorites? Uh, oh, you know, actually, one that you tell me about a lot, if I'll feed you an answer, okay. De- uh, Devil Survivor. Oh, yeah. We talk a lot about, about that game. Oh, I loved that game. That was so much fucking fun. That was, um, uh, th- so it's Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker okay. uh, for the 3DS, uh, which is a, an enhanced port of Devil Survivor 2 for the DS. Uh, and it's basically, the enhancements are essentially a fully rewritten, or at least largely rewritten script uh, and uh, voice acting. And um, that was just a blast. The entire experience was just, it was basically, because it's, it's, it's me, the character, essentially. It's, I play a dude who's like totally out of his element in what is essentially a monster apocalypse taking place in Japan, oh. where like the ent- reality as we know it is basically being destroyed. And it's just me like losing my shit all the time and like trying to like hit on women and failing miserably. And it's, it's, it's just fun. It was just a really, really fun experience. It was like, what I liked about it the most, straight up, was like the writing. Yeah. I, I felt like every line of dialogue, I was like, oh, I can just sink my teeth into this. Was it, was it like Yu Yu Hakusho levels of like, this is so fucking like memorable and cool and yeah. snappy kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's like what Yu Yu Hakusho is to me, is like, there's so much, like just the dialogue of that show is so like, mm, you know? Yeah. But uh, I, because I think also, did they just put out a new one? I think of you, you hockey. No, no, of, of Devil Survivor. Oh, I or like, was a new one coming out? I think or something like that. Not that I know. Of. Or, or is the one that you're talking about? Was that the newest one? Maybe I'm confused. That, that probably was the newest one. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, how long ago was that? Was it because that was Cup of Tea? I think, right? Yeah, I think it was uh, two years ago. I okay. Think. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's yeah. Cup of Tea, where they do many, many lovely, lovely video games. Yes, they are awesome. Was, was that uh, Patrick Seitz or Wendy yep. Lee? That okay. was that was Patrick Seitz. Yeah. Fantastic and director. He is okay. <laughs> there are engineers out there that have like just big long lists of out of context Patrick Seitz direction because in context it makes sense, but like out of it's like it's like okay, I really really want to feel like a burning vagina when you say this. <laughs> it's it's stuff like that. You're just like out of context. You're just like what? I'm just 
just want to I want to hear because pa- Patrick. I mean, if those of you guys aren't familiar with him, he's got like one of the one of those like lowest in imagination. Oh, yeah. Like, hey guys, hey guys, Patrick Sykes, how are you? It's good to meet you. Bur- burning oh, vagina. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and, so, and, and he'll he'll say stuff like that, and you'll you'll get it in context because what he means is like, for instance, maybe it's like say like a really really angry woman or something like that. It's 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 like your girlfriend is right over there for Christ's sake. I, it's not. He doesn't look at Heather and tell her that. <laughs> I want. And, I want no, to feel no, the. He, he, he I wants, want to feel the really, heat coming off of your uh, vagina. No, no, but yeah, really, your your burning vagina, Ben. The that's one right. That you have. I do have one. That I pork you in. Yes, that right. one. Yes. Got it. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's <laughs> tight and ready for you anytime. <laughs> Only on Curblog, everybody. <laughs> da, 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 you can't get da, da, this da, da, shit on Kingdom Hearts Insider or what? Uh Yeah. So that's gross. But yeah, no. Um. That was just, it was just a really, all of his direction is like that, except in context, it makes total sense, but out of context, it's just like the weirdest shit. So he's, like, he's a fantastic director to, to work with. Wait, weren't they also yeah. playing gross out of context clips of like Eden Regal, who was like playing opposite to you as a character? Uh, no, they were playing like all of the disgusting things that I would say about her character to her. No, 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 wait. Was it Eden? No, Eden. no, no. Was it wasn't me? Yeah, it was Eden. I think you told me about that. No, I, I think I think Eden overheard some of them because I don't I don't oh, think it was her character. Oh, oh, but like, no, my character is in love with a character called Eo, who is basically like this very um, chestically well endowed, shall we say? I'm uh, sure that's a word, chestically. Yeah. Uh, chesticles. Uh, character. Chesticles. That's a regular show. Sure. Word. And she's um she she has a personality too, but like that's she's like a very very hot anime girl, and so my character is just smitten with her, and so I'm just constantly saying disgusting things. Like every time they're like, okay, we want we want to set a level. Ben, just like say something is Daichi. Immediately the first thing that comes out of my mouth is just something gross, like, oh, Eo, oh, I just just want to wear your pussy like a gas mask. <laughs> Oh, just huff your queefs, <laughs> hold it like a bong hit. Oh, oh, oh EO, God. just just nasty, vile things Where like you that. You get all the material for your fucking oddball. Oh outtakes. yeah, yeah. It's very easy to come out with all that stuff for oddball because it's like, oh, oh what did man. I say? Is a I think Daichi? you just literally said like the most disgusting thing that's ever been heard on a curb blog. In yes, I get a gold star. Man, yeah, Liz, Liz is Liz is really gonna have to top you on that one. Oh if, boy, if on the next one. <laughs> Take. Oh, <God>. <laughs> I'm sorry. What she's been, you are patient, by the way. I think we've been going at this Jesus for like an hour Christ or more. Almighty. Oh, um, <laughs> the nightmares need to start. Yeah, yeah really. Uh, that'll be the type of enemy in Kingdom Hearts Three is nightmares. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, no, the buttless. The, but, the buttless. The, that's what we decided. Like the, the unbirthed. The unbirthed. Ew. <laughs> that's, oh. what I, that's what I thought the unbirthed were. <laughs> the unbirthed. Oh my uh, god. I mean, I guess they kind of just are. Just a fetus <laughs> rolling around like like oh. <laughs> Placenta attack! Just, just, Vanitas is like, yes, they are all my placentas that came out of me. I produced them forever, and Ventus is like, gross! Jesus! Ew! Dude, you were a part of well, me? Yeah, yes, I am the placenta that came out of you, Ventus. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3 gets really fucking deep, guys. Oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to put a not safe for anything uh, <laughs> no- notice on this fucking episode. Okay. Um, I don't okay. even want to know what you're going to draw for so, this. So, so yes, please give me some advice as a relatively... You've already given me a lot of advice. Okay. Uh, I, 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 no, actually, you know what? To, to, give, to give real credit to, uh, Ben actually and, and the other guests who I'll be bringing on uh, this, this month as well, uh, ben has been one of the biggest supporters and like really big helps in like me learning a lot more about like because like you know okay I sound like an asshole I don't care Uh-oh. I'm surrounded by a lot of uh, folks who are new and also just getting into this and who have done it for you know about the same number of years as I have or less or more you know depending give or take and Ben has been doing this for so fucking long and he's seen it all and he's been in the the, the deepest you know shit of all this. And it's funny, too, because without going into too many of the details, we're in kind of an interesting turning point for the voiceover world right now, especially mm. with uh, video games. Uh, a lot of you might have seen some articles that have been coming out about some stuff kind of negotiating with that. Maybe things will even be different by the time this comes out. Who knows? You never know. Yeah, but, um, but Ben really has been, like, a great perspective for me to, you know, because there's only so much you can do. I, you know, I do so much research and learn all this shit, but there's only so much you can learn unless you've, like, really done it yourself. And Ben has had so many experiences doing, like, Virtually every kind of voiceover. You mm. t- I mean, you've done you've done almost every. I have you know, not done an book on tape. Book. Okay, okay, book. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's more of a New York thing. That's true. They do do that here. Well, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, they, they do it everywhere. But like, it's yeah. it's in New York, it's a much bigger thing like, yeah. in general. But um, but yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, 
any general words of advice, maybe things that most people don't often say or, mm. or often hear that you okay. think is important? Uh, I mean, not in like any order of importance, but like, okay. So, hmm. There have been times when I've heard, I won't mention names, of course, but like people have said things along the lines of, um, hi, I'm really socially handicapped. I'm not very good at talking to people, but I like cartoons. Uh, I think I should do voiceover. And it's one of those things I hear, and I'm like, ooh, gosh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say anything mean to this person, but it's one of those things of like, you really need to reconsider. This is the acting industry. There are essentially three things that uh, are required to help you become a success, especially in voiceover. The first thing is talent. Uh, you have to be a good actor. The second thing is uh, personality. And the third thing is luck. Yep. Basically, if you've got the first two, you can pretty much make your own luck. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, if that personality isn't there, and most people don't want to say this because it sounds like, oh, if you kiss the right pair of butt cheeks, you're going you're gonna to go far in this business. That's not really the case. It's just that what people think of you does matter. Yeah, if if they think true. that you're just like this really creepy, weirdo person who just like, they just feel like this awful presence from you, you probably shouldn't be trying to do voiceover because and, yeah. it, it's going to like hurt you. And I mean, there are shy people. In this shy business. is fine. Sure. And, and also there are assholes. Yes. <laughs> who work. Yes. But... Yeah. Yeah, but also those assholes are very talented usually. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually how they come about that. But the, the, the trouble is this. When you are a bad person, but personality-wise, like if you're a jerk, if you're an asshole, if you're weird, etc. It gets around. Sure. It gets around. <laughs> and on top of that, eventually, like for every person who's like that, who's like really talented but has a bad personality, there's like about 20 people waiting in the shadows to be the next you mm -hmm. who are like, hey, I'm a nice guy. And I'm just as talented as that asshole. And I sound or can do all the things that they can do. Exactly. So why are you hiring that guy? And people go, oh, that's a good point. And they wind up not hiring that person anymore. I've had cases like that. Like when I, cause I, like for Cryomore, uh, which, which we're both working on, mm -hmm. I, I think, actually, yeah, I haven't even announced that, but I'll oh. say like Ben, Ben is part of the cast of Cryomore. We'll, uh, we'll announce who he's playing later on. But, yay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean like. When I worked on Crime War, there were there were hundreds, I, I believe, of people, like at least a hundred different actors I auditioned, and there were some people that I didn't give the sides to because it's like, well, I also have so and so, and so and so can do everything that such and such can do, but better, and they're not a dickhole. Right. So I think I'm just gonna go with them, and I think I can live with that because I'm gonna get that option from them anyway. Yeah. So, so you know. Yeah. I mean, like I would say. It's mostly talent that determines whether or not you know you're gonna go far. But if you've got a bad personality, don't, 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 don't try to do it because yeah. you're you're really gonna hurt yourself in the long run. Um, but I would say uh, if you're somebody who's new, there are what I consider to be different levels, and I don't mean necessarily levels of like importance or value or anything like that. But in terms of like what is considered professional and high end versus amateur. Sure. So like I would say like level zero is probably like you're one of those guys who um he's really funny and friendly and he's like the life of the party and he entertains people by doing funny voices or impressions and all your friends think that you're really funny and and they're constantly telling you how great your voices are that's cool and there's nothing wrong with being that person but to go hey i should be a voice actor and then move to la that might be moving too fast yeah so it's always a good idea to go okay let me take this step by step let me, you always want to be like the big fish in a small pond, so to speak. So you never want to go, oh, I can do some voices. Like, oh, the classic thing is, uh, uh, hey, um, I'm good at doing impressions. Hey, I'm good at doing voices. Hey, I've been told I have a really good speaking voice. Should I be a voice actor? And it's kind of like the response is, hey, I've got a really nice paintbrush. Should I be a painter? Yeah. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really necessarily translate over. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing of like, okay, that's great. That's a good thing to have, but you want to make sure that this is really something you want to do. For sure. Because at some point, it's going to involve a very large life change for you in all likeliness. Yeah. Um, basically, it goes from 
uh, you're that guy who entertains people with voices to maybe you try to do some stuff by yourself on YouTube to maybe you go on a place like Voice Acting Alliance and you try to do some stuff for free. Or, or, alter, or like, you know, the old-fashioned way of just doing theater or radio. And sure. Or studying that traditional seeing, seeing all that stuff. But I'm talking specifically voiceover uh, sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, and then if that works out, cool. Maybe you, you wind up going on like Voices.com and doing some radio commercials and stuff like that. Building up your, your talent pool. Building up your contacts. And then... Usually, for most people, it's going to involve a move because I would say the entry level for like animation for most places is anime. Yeah. And anime is something that really can't be done from home, yeah. at least not professionally. Like, like fan dub stuff, sure, but a professional studio is going to go, yeah, we're going to have this dubbed by like Funimation in Texas. Yeah. We're going to have this dubbed by like NYAV Post. Uh, uh, we're going to have this dubbed by Bang Zoom, Studiopolis. And these are big facilities that exist in New York, uh, or, or also, of course, Canada. Uh, uh, there's Ocean, uh, Ocean, Group, Ocean Group in Canada. Blue Water, exactly. Cetera, yeah. So there's, there, there are real studios that do this stuff. And so if you want to get into those, what are basically considered entry level voice acting gigs for animation, you got to go to those places. So that means you have to make sure that you have enough money saved up. You have to make sure that this really is what you want and that you really have skill at this and it's not just in your head. Yeah. Um, because otherwise you're going to wind up banging your head against a wall, auditioning against people who are not only better than you, but who are also better known than you mm -hmm. and find yourself unable to get anything and go, what am I doing here? And you've blown through like your life savings because you go to New York, you go to Los Angeles. It's expensive to live there. It's uh, not cheap. A, a lot of people, again, without, without naming names, but... There's been sad stories of people come out here, you know, like to start their careers, quote oh, yeah. unquote, and they have to move back home and, within a, a year. And keep in mind, it's not just like untalented hacks. Keep in mind, like for instance, uh, I won't mention this guy's name, uh, but he uh, came to Los Angeles. He was originally from Chicago. There's a voice acting industry in Chicago yeah. too. Mm -hmm. um, he came to Los Angeles and got in with my agency. My agency is CESD. It is, and I'm not saying this egotistically, it is It is one of the biggest voice acting agencies in the country. For sure. So it is not a small feat to get in there. So this guy was good. Uh, and when, when he first came in to, to like audition stuff, this was back when I was doing a lot more auditioning at the agency as opposed to doing it remotely from my booth at home. Um, I would see him there almost every day. And he had this big smile on his face, like this kind of like starstruck, like, oh, wow, I can't believe I'm here. This is so awesome. What are you auditioning for? Oh, oh that's cool. What are you going to do? Oh, you know what? Don't tell me. I don't want to, I don't want to like be one of those guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like he had, he had like this, oh like God. this, like sort of like zany, like, aw, like starstruck personality. Yeah. It was like, it was, it was kind of cute. Anyway. After a while, after like the first week of there, he, he was still the same way. A month goes by. He toned it down a bit. Another month goes by. He toned it back considerably. A third month goes by. This is now, so he's been here for about 90 days with no work. And I mean, not even like a little radio gig that pays like 200 bucks. Nothing. And eventually, after I think about a total of six months, by the end of the sixth month, it was just sort of like, oh yeah, hey, how's it going? It was one of those things. And he finally said like, yeah, so uh, today's my last day. I gotta, I gotta move back home. Uh, and it's one of those things. And it, like this guy, I'd auditioned with him before in the booth. He was talented. This was not some like loser who sucked and was in over his head. He was good. He got in with a big agency, and still failed. So you have to realize if you want to do this professionally, that's a risk you're gonna take. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would recommend, and this is, this is tough to to say. Um, best way I can put it is this. It's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. Yep. And what I mean by that is, when people say it's all about who you know, hey, I know Curbifer. Hey, Curb, can I take you out to lunch? Let <laughs> sure. me buy you oh, dinner. Oh, let's do that. Hold yeah, on. oh my gosh, let's network. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a blowy afterward. <laughs> yeah. Sure thing, no yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. uh, That's, that, yeah, okay. <laughs> That was, yes, that was me, That's really. That's not how it works. Yeah. I, I give way better blowjobs than that. That's anyway. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Sorry. I'm sorry, Heather. I yeah, still love you. She's plopped down again. <laughs> she's just like, I can't believe I'm listening uh, to my boyfriend say all these terrible things. Anyway, uh, but. Okay, bye. I love you. <laughs> Uh, uh, so anyway, it's not about that. It's not about kissing ass. It's not about going to parties and socializing and networking and all that stuff. What it's mainly about is people noticing you, realizing you're good, working with you more than once, and then telling other people about you. That's what has real power. Because for instance, like let's say um, a lot of the ways that I've gotten into studios, uh, for instance, I did some work at uh, Studiopolis, and I worked with Wendy Lee. Uh, Wendy Lee is a uh, voice actor, of course. Uh, she's been doing this for a long time. She's excellent. She's also a voice director. So she wound up casting a, uh, a video game over at this place that I'd never heard of called Cup of Tea. 
what do they do? Tons of video games. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. Um, yeah, sweet. I, I had no idea how to even, you know, get in there. I'd never even heard of the place. But um, I got to audition for some stuff there, and I wound up working on a game. Um, and uh, the engineer was this nice lady named Danny. I did not know that uh, Danny and her sister Lainey are the owners of Cup of Tea. So she got to see, one of the people running the place got to see what I can do and was like, hey, you're pretty good. Why don't you come back for some more auditions? We'll send you some stuff. I was like, okay, cool. So because of that, I wound up getting in with Cup of Tea. So when they have auditions, they'll call me in or they'll have me do some stuff from home. And so that's sort of how I wind up um, uh, building like a repertoire of different people is like people working in different places. They know me. I don't go to anybody. I don't hobnob with anybody. I don't kiss a bunch of butt. I'm not good at that, to be perfectly honest. My but, but you do, socializing fair, is terrible. To be fair, you do mm-hmm. also like you make a lot of personal connections with people at different places. And sure. You, and people know you as a nice person. Yeah. And you don't you don't kiss ass. No. You don't fake. You don't whatever. It, you just act like yourself. If I say to somebody like, hey, I think you're a really great engineer, like which I've told to say uh, David Barr, who works over at Studiopolis, that's not me trying to get work. I really think he's really good at what he does. It, and, he, and he is. Engineers are our gods. They really are. But my, this is my impression of, of the actor's relationship with an engineer. Here it is. Okay. And take one. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Ah, okay, now take this bowl of my vomit and shit and turn it into gold. Because that's basically what we do. It's like, we'll, we'll do some, like, god-awful take, and they'll just go, hang on a minute, and they'll work some sort of technical miracle, and yep. it, like, magically yep. fits into place, and it's amazing. Yep. So, like, yep. much respect to, like, engineers, especially the good ones. And, and engineer-director combos are, like, oh, yeah. fucking, they're, like... <laughs> Christ allegory. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I've worked with uh, Suzanne Goldish, who's the uh, the director of um, uh, all of the uh, uh, Sailor Moon stuff, at, uh, and she she engineers while she directs. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah, a lot of people from back in New York like her. Yeah, uh, a lot of them do that as well. And yep. it's, it's handy. It's very handy. It's very cool. Anyway, um, so but, but but my point is this: um, seek seek a back door if you can. There is a front door to the voice acting industry, and let me explain what that is. That's where you go out, um, you move to a, a place where voiceover is very popular, very big, like Los Angeles, and you say, okay, I'm going to get like a dead-end job to help me pay for uh, my room and board, so I'm going to be like, a, a, I'm going to bust tables at a restaurant that I don't like. In the meanwhile, I'm going to try to get this voice acting career off the ground, so you spend thousands of dollars to uh, get a professionally made demo. Then you go to agencies and you go, hey, will you listen to it? And they go, no, not until you join the union. So then you try to do a whole bunch of, say, extra work on sets, which is very, very time consuming and brutal to join the union. Then it costs you about $3,000 to join the union. So you've now spent anywhere from like five to six grand just trying to get your career off the ground after also hopefully saving up you know enough to even move out here in the first place yes or anywhere like that so that's that rough sense. so then you go to agencies and let's say you submit yourself and say you get lucky and one of them picks you up fantastic which by the way and you can ask most people who are out here who are mm-hmm. good how hard it is to get into an agency yep. it is fucking difficult yep. uh, so you'll do that then you'll get submitted for auditions where you're competing up against the biggest names in the voiceover industry today and you have to try to beat them using nothing but your audition because they're not going to meet you. You're going to send these auditions in either from home or you're going to go to your agency and record it there. And that's it. So in other words, the director or the producers, they're probably not even going to see you. So you, they're going to listen to you and they're going to go, that guy sounds good. Oh, but I also know, you know, insert name of some massive voiceover talent here who can do something similar to that. I'll just hire that guy if I want that voice. So that's what you're up against. It is, it's essentially like saying, hey, um, I want you to blow up this mountain, but instead of using these sticks of dynamite, I want you to use these firecrackers. <laughs> it's fucking brutal. So looking for a backdoor, what I mean by that is... It's about trying to find small things that can lead to bigger things. Um, The good thing about the way things are structured is if you go to anime, for instance, you're not going to see big, huge names doing anime. And it's not because they can't do it. It's because anime pays $64.25 an hour with a two-hour minimum, which is compared to an original uh, animated series. Like after tax for some of these, I'll get a check for like 900 bucks. You compare that to something where you're screaming at the top of your lungs for two hours to get paid after taxes, maybe 117 bucks. That's one of the reasons why the big names don't do it. Yeah. So here's the thing. Big names aren't doing it. That's an in for you because they can't just go and grab big name talent. They need new people. Yep. Then there, let's... there are a lot of, and well, the other thing too is uh, to add to that is mm-hmm. like 
a lot more recently uh, in like the last like 10 years or so, mm -hmm. a lot of really, really good people who started in anime, like a lot of the Funimation guys that sure. came out here from Texas, Travis Willingham, Troy, Troy Baker, Baker, Laura yeah. Bailey, et mm -hmm. cetera, they're getting into prelay animation now. And, you know, back in the day, I, you know, I remember hearing this from a lot of different people. There was this, as, as Trevor Duvall likes to describe it, a sort of shadow hierarchy of like, oh, you do anime. That's not real acting. But now there's so many people who start doing that, mm -hmm. and they're amazing performers. Yeah. Like that's that's their beginning to, to voiceover in a lot of cases, and they get you know bigger and bigger and bigger stuff. Yeah. So now it you know even mm -hmm. though I don't think a lot of people like to consider it like a training ground, it can be if utilized in that way. Yeah. So it, it's in other words, it's a really the more time you spend in a studio working the more you're going to work because people will notice you. People will see you at the studio and be like, oh, it's that guy, and think about you for future roles. So the more you're working, the more you're working, which is kind of a catch-22 because if you're not working, how do, you, how do you start? It's that kind of thing. So looking for those back doors is always uh, your key. So small things like that. Let's say, for instance, let's say you move out to Los Angeles. You got no fucking connections. You don't know anybody out here. You just came out here with like a hope and a dream. Okay, there are options for you. You can more or less, essentially, technically, kinda, buy connections. And what I mean by that is, okay, let's say you wanna get into anime. Go to Bang Zoom, okay? They have classes with Tony Oliver. If you're already good at doing dubbing, maybe you just practice at home all the time, you're naturally gifted at it, and you're a good actor, and you take his class, you're at Bang Zoom. You're yep. at a professional recording facility. And a guy who directs shows is Real seeing shows. you and can be like, hey, casting director, mommy, yes. uh, this person who I just did a class with, and Tony's a guy who's very supportive of new people, yes. particularly, so can we try this person out? You might get a shot. Yeah, you know, it might just be Walla. It might not be something huge, but again, it's an in. If you want to get into video games, uh, right now uh, uh, PCB is having a class. I think it's like... Um, six classes total and it's for like I think it's like 600 bucks yeah. so yeah it's pricey to take these classes but it's an in you get to go and, and completely worth it everybody's yeah. been saying great things about that one too there so. you go so you get to go not only learn something which is always good but you're getting to show what you can do yep. in front of people who actually cast video games hey, show. so that sort of stuff super helpful so there are ways but um, overall going at it through the front door is a nightmare it's doable it's doable, but expected to take years and years unless you just get stupid lucky. Yeah. Um, and that's that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. So it's one of these, I mean, like, uh, right now, for instance, I've been very fortunate to uh, get back into Cartoon Network. Um, I've gotten to do some episodes of regular show. Uh, I can't tell you who I play. Um, I got to be in an episode of Uncle Grandpa, same thing. Can't tell you who I play. Um, but it's, it's this thing of the reason I got in um, is because I got to work with Chris Zimmerman, who's the uh, casting director for Regular Show, and she basically just said, hey, why don't you come in? I'm going to have you come in and do some stuff on Regular Show because I worked with her on a, on a little video game uh, that, uh, that I, th I think is, um, I think it's on Steam now. Anyway, uh, but the point is, that's how I got in. Is like it's not because I went to Cartoon Network and I banged on their door and said, "I am a voice actor, please Remember hire me." me. I did kids next door. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't really care about that stuff unless because yeah. if you're not on their minds, you're not there and you're not working. And it's yeah. that kind of thing. So if you can, if you if you meet people through some sort of a networking device, like you're taking classes and people are like, "Oh yeah, I'm working at this studio." Hey, dude, I, I think you're really good. They're looking for people. Can I give can I give you them your contact information? Like this is how you go about doing it. Because these are the jobs that the big guys don't want to do, and there's that hierarchy. So you start off small. You start off doing maybe some non-union video games. They're not going to pay as well as the union stuff. Of course not. But you start doing enough stuff, you start working with people, and people go back and forth. There are people who out there who um, are the voice director of like some big union projects who also do little non-union stuff on the side. So maybe they go, hey, when you join the union, let me know. So, because I want you to, to try out for this other game that I'm doing. It's that kind of thing. Or even just, hey, why don't you do this video game and use that as a way of getting into the union, et cetera, as opposed to killing yourself as an extra on a movie set that you don't even care about. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are alternatives, and it's best to look for those. Um, that's probably the best advice I can give is make sure that you're at the level you need to be at to do these things, um, and never, ever trust yourself. Um, until you reach a certain level of experience, don't ever say to yourself, I'm good enough. <laughs> don't do that. 
because let other people tell you that you're yeah. good, yeah, yeah. especially people who are paying you. If it's somebody who's paying you who says, you're really good, that means something. Yes. If it's something you're doing something for free for somebody and they don't give a shit, probably not. If it's for your parents, if they're like, you know, hey, you do funny voices, say something cute into a microphone. Oh, that's great. You're yeah. the best kid in the world. That's wonderful, but that doesn't mean crap unless it's coming from somebody who really knows what the hell they're talking quite, about. Quite relevant to our recent Curb Live I did about knowing yourself where you don't always get to necessarily determine if you're a good person or good at what you do. Other mm -hmm. people often are. Yep. You don't get to decide that you're a hero, Tara. They do. <laughs> Listen to those cheers. I'm Zach Fair. Sorry. <laughs> um, bringing it back. Uh. Uh, uh, kind of uh, to wrap things up a little bit and sure. add on to it, uh, my little three bits of advice in tandem with yours mm -hmm. are uh, your former kid ne kids, ne kids Next Door colleague, D Baker, wrote a wonderful website yes. called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. Yep. I always immediately post that to somebody asking me when I get asked for advice very rarely, mm. and I go, read everything on here. Yep. My usual follow-up to that is make sure you're doing this for the right reasons. You're, you know, my, by that I mean like make sure that like you really truly give a shit about acting yeah. and not like... Oh, I want to be big at conventions. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, I saw Vic Mignogna or whoever at a convention and talking about anime, and now I want to be a voice actor. It's like, no, you have to want to do acting. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. basically, if you still want to be a voice actor after hearing me say about how ridiculously hard it can be to make it out here, you probably really do want to be a voice yeah, actor. Yeah, ex exactly. But, exactly. like, I mean, my, my point of view is a little bit different from yours. I say I don't give a crap why somebody starts because people who are like that who really shouldn't be doing this, they will wind up getting weeded out very quickly. Fair enough. So I don't really care. And I feel like sometimes you start off doing something for the wrong reason and you wind up liking it for the right reason. So... I don't really care why you do it, but... Just... I care. I want you to be morally sound because I am a hero of fucking justice. Thanks, Batman. Um, but but on, a, on a more realistic level, that's, that's, oh, more, what, that, that's more the third thing? thing. The third thing is uh, very much in tandem with yours. You have to be two, two very basic grounding down kind of things. Good and cool. Yeah. If you're good, you can do the work. Mm -hmm. If you're cool, people want to work with you. Yeah. So that, it really does come down to those two things. Yep. It, it would. It's because the. But your your description of like you know having a engaging personality and sure. somebody somebody that people will remember. Yeah. Et I mean, cetera. You don't, like, listen. Yeah. You don't have to be like the funniest person in the room. Lord no. knows, I'm not the funniest person in the room. I leave that stuff like to like guys like. You know, Roger Craig Smith and Troy Baker, if you put those two guys in a room, it's freaking hysterical. <laughs> they will just say the most profane and horrible things to each other, and it's funny as fuck. But, like, I can't, I can't compete with that. I know my place. I'm not some improv king. But I'll at least be nice. I'll at least show up. I'll try to be helpful. And sometimes that's really all you need is just to be a decent person. Absolutely. So if you can muster up a good personality, and if you are legitimately good at this, you can go far. And you can basically, like I said, make your own luck. Because luck at, the, at that point is just getting your foot in the door to show people what you can do. Well said. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Thank let you. Me, let me spot check something because, sir, oh. uh -oh. uh, I believe. Did I pass it the you, longest? You have now officially, yep. Uh, congratulations, Ben Diskin. You have recorded the longest curb log yet. I know because my girlfriend is dead. Yes. She's, she's lying she's back a, there. She's a skeleton yes. over, over there in the corner. I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry, Heather. I will miss you forever, but I still have you, Curb. That's true. Yummy, yummy, So yummy. Uh, we're going to go have sex now <laughs> on, on Heather's corpse. Uh, but, in the, but in the meantime. I uh, hate you both. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Her ghost from the grave oh, has come back. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, okay. You know what? Actually, in, in retribution, Heather, would you like to plug your Twitter? Yeah. On the longest curb blog ever? Yeah, get in here. Get in here. Just, just b before I give him a chance the, to do the that. The Twitter that I never use? That one. Yeah, that yes. one. <laughs> that I, that I plug you sometimes when I'm like, we're playing Kingdom Hearts or whatever, or Mario Maker. Get close to this part of the microphone, because yes. so, otherwise they can't hear you. Really get in there. Yes. Get right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even joking. Ow. There you go. Ow. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. There you go. Okay, so what am I doing? Just say, uh, say your, the name of your, your Twitter. What is your Twitter yes. handle? Oh, it is a, at H-B-P-E-T-T-I-G. Don't follow it. There's nothing on there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> follow it. Follow it. Do it. Do it. Yeah, ha hash, hashtag hi, Heather. Uh, <laughs> good. And they're, yeah. they're going to do that now. Yes. I, have, I have close to a 10... I cl pfft, English. I have close to 100,000 followers on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, prepare to get a lot of annoying bullshit. Yay. Not, I mean, I mean, lovely people. Wonderful. Will, yes. Because everybody I, who is a subscriber. I love you all. Yes. I love all of you. And, <laughs> and I, yes. Cur cur the the oh, true cur no. believers. No, no. Okay. You know what? I, I, cur I deserve believe. that. Yeah. I deserve that. True, true cur believers. Uh, ben, your, your Facebook and oh, Twitter. Okay. My, my Twitter is at Benjamin Diskin. 
Uh, and my because there's another guy named Ben Diskin who fucking took it. Piece of shit. Uh, I do have an Instagram which is at Ben Diskin because I beat him to it. Ha ha. But I never use that. You so did it. don't I, don't I even. Always believed in you. You can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> I never use it. Uh, and Facebook is uh, Ben Diskin official after Facebook.com slash yes. so Facebook.com slash Ben Diskin. Give official. him more likes. He's only got a thousand. Yeah. He more. Oh, you are a nice guy. You haven't to me. updated this shit in ages. I don't yeah. use it that much though. You should. I should. I should. I need to. I need to put uh, Mariana's uh, contact contact information on that so people will actually know where to fucking get in contact with me for like conventions <laughs> but I'm too stupid to do it that it was important yeah, yeah you just signed with her just go right uh, yes. convention booking agency yes our lovely friend Mariana she is awesome awesome uh, well thank you for coming out here and joining me we my just pleasure so, we just so happened to record this one night because they were bored and they were like we want to come over and hang out I'm like okay we'll do this so yeah. uh, Bam. That's, that's gonna that's gonna wrap us up so in the comments below uh, tell us all about your favorite show that Ben Diskin worked on that, that maybe you either did or did not already know about that he was in. Uh, and why? Have you met him at a con? Have you touched his butt at a convention? <laughs> Please tell us. Because uh, I know I have. Boy, howdy. Uh, um, so much. And, uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll have, uh, I mean, of course, you can suggest the usual curb blood topics in the future. Maybe ones for you and I to do uh, as we have done sure. other ones. In, 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 you know. Also, congratulations to all of you poor souls who actually made it through this entire thing and are still alive. Oh, Good yes. job. Yes, yeah, because yes, that was a feat for you. Yeah, Good yeah, job. I'll, I'll, You're I'll, our hero. I'll, all of you get a, an internet cookie from me. Mm. Not, not a real one. I can't give those out. Yeah. Too complicated. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, look forward to. I believe. Let me even check the schedule real quick. Uh, I believe the next Kerr blog that we will be having after this one uh, is premiering uh, a, a talking about an, another game project that I worked on, and oh. I should be having uh, a bunch of other lovely guests. By this point, the Disgaea one has come out, where I was joined by a few of the cast members from that. And uh, yeah, and actually, that the, the next one is a game that you worked on. Yes, I, pl I played some minor characters in it. We haven't recorded it yet, but may maybe you'll even be part of it. So oh we'll, my gosh! We'll, we'll see. I know. Well, I know. It's not a. Not I'm so. A I'm part, so but, like a big deal in that you're, game. But you're well. You're welcome to. Oh. Well, another another person who will probably be joining it also is like a major major character, but he's going to be there just because I love him so. Yay! Uh, so yeah, uh, look forward to that. And thanks for listening. And uh, kids next door, battle stations. Don't scream it. Kids